At this point, we're at least getting a clearer idea about what philosophy is, getting an idea how to narrow down the definition because we understand the problems, the kinds of knowledge, the kind of wisdom that we're talking about in philosophy, that philosophy is trying to seek answers to. Now what I'd like to do is conclude with you guys, we'll have a couple more videos, but take it slowly, just to give you an overview of the period of classical Greek philosophy, when philosophy got started. And kind of the thing to focus in on is probably the central figure in philosophy, which is Plato. Not to be confused with the stuff that you used to play around with when you were a kid, you know, that was Plato, this is Plato. But there was a pretty famous philosopher last century called Alfred North Whitehead. Uh, and actually, he and another philosopher named Bertrand Russell were instrumental in developing what we call symbolic logic. And um, it had kind of an effect on your life today because based on their work on logic and the foundations of mathematics, <coughs> excuse me, they developed symbolic logic which really enabled people to create computers and hence the smartphones and all the stuff that we appreciate today. So he's a pretty smart guy, Alfred North Whitehead. And in a book he wrote, Pro Process and Reality, he kind of characterizes, he calls it European philosophy. Sometimes we say Western philosophy as opposed to Eastern philosophy, Eastern thought. He says the safest general characterization of the European philosophical tradition is that it consists of a series of footnotes to Plato. Now what the heck did he mean by that? He's saying that just about everything we talk about in philosophy today can be traced back to Plato's writings, what Plato had to say about the problems of philosophy, that Plato kind of invented them, or certainly put them together for us, and we're just sort of following in the tradition, making, you know, some footnotes, adding some information about the problems that Plato raised in the first place. So obviously Plato is a very central figure in you know, in, in the history of philosophy. You know, so if we're taking a look at what I call now the heavyweights of uh, classical Greek philosophy, Plato is obviously in the middle. Now, Plato didn't all of a sudden wake up one morning. You see his dates. Um, I never ask you about dates. Don't, don't say much about it, about dates in general. He was from Greece. He was from Athens, probably the same place you've seen the pictures of the uh, Acropolis and the Parthenon, the ruins. That's part of, you know, Plato's Greece. But Plato didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, okay, you know, guess what? I'm going to invent philosophy today. Or I'm going to think about it. But rather, Plato followed certain other people in a tradition. In fact, he had a teacher who's probably thought of as being sort of the patron saint of philosophy. This is the guy that really got philosophy started. And this was Socrates. Socrates was Plato's teacher. Many of you may have heard about the story of the execution, the trial and execution of Socrates. We'll be talking a little bit, a little bit about it. But what's interesting about Socrates Again, people preceded Socrates worrying about philosophical questions, and actually what preceded him, people spent a lot of time, or at least what we know of him today, worrying about metaphysics, worrying about reality, worrying about you know, knowledge. But Socrates asked characteristic questions having to do with ethics and political philosophy, but really in ethics. So it was sort of the, when we hit the history of philosophy, when we hit the point where Socrates comes on the scene, we see Socrates is really focused in or turns his attention to ethics. Plato wrote on extensively on all the subjects. The other thing interesting to note about Socrates is, and let me ask you, think about this, you don't have to write, how many books do you think Socrates wrote? I mean, Socrates, we hear about it all over the place. Remember, the we saw the cliff clip, I thought, uh, I tried to show you the clip, I hope I did, from um, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, where they go pick up Socrates, Socrates, we saw that in class. Pretty well-known guy talked about in history, 
You figure he must have written a lot, right? How many books? Put down a number. Socrates, we have no writings of Socrates at all. The way we know anything about what Socrates thought about this is through the writings of Plato, that is, some dialogues which we think are the early ones that, that Plato wrote. Some of the earlier books he, he wrote in dialogue. It sounds like a play, characters talking to each other. And the main character in many of Plato's dialogues, just about all of them actually, is Socrates. And the earlier, the ones that they've identified as Plato's earlier works, they feel really just when Plato's putting words in the mouth of Socrates that those are really the views that Socrates had and later on we see things changing a little and those are views we attribute to Plato. So he's one of the three heavyweights and we had Socrates, the teacher of Plato, and Plato had a student who had a trim has in right to this day Again, tremendous influence on the world, Aristotle. Now, Plato, Socrates and Plato lived in, a, in Athens. Aristotle spent quite a bit of time in Athens, but he was born up in Macedon. And a Aristotle, while he's very well known in philosophy, there's also kind of a pretty significant historical figure that was uh, associate, who was associated with Aristotle. And the way I'll get you to remember this is the guy that was associated with Aristotle as his student actually at one point pretty much conquered the entire civilized world, which was kind of interesting because you may have heard of a guy, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was a student of Aristotle, and his father was a guy named Philip you know, the king of Macedon and other part of Greece, another city-state in Greece. And what's kind of interesting in, in, about it is to speculate a little bit is, you know, maybe Philip got the idea from Plato that, um, you know, Plato in the Republic, we talked to him, remember that's where we started the de etymological definition of philosophy, that Plato was the one in the Republic who says, actually in the mouth of Socrates, he says that um, philosophers should rule the ideal state, the Republic, and, the philosoph and philosophers are the true lovers of wisdom. And he proposes a whole system of education to educate people in philosophy. Well, it looks like Philip of Macedon bought, bought the story and had his son Alexander study with Aristotle. Aristotle is well known for his writings on all subjects of philosophy. He's kind of, uh, though uh, Alexander the Great is not quite known for his philosophy, but he was a little more influential in that basically he took over, you know, what the whole Middle East, which was, you know, starting from, you know, Italy, which was part of Greece in those days, or they at least spoke Greece all the way down almost to Egypt, which was just about the entire civilized world and inland somewhat. So these are the heavyweights. But remember, Socrates didn't just, you know, the same way Plato didn't wake up one morning and start thinking about this stuff and invent philosophy, Socrates didn't invent philosophy. That So let's spend a couple of minutes looking at the people, you know, the, where philosophy got started and ha what led up to Socrates asking the questions, the basic questions of value of ethics that we now study today.